If you're making less than $10,000 a month, you're at the very least making one of the eight mistakes I'm going to share with you in this video. Mistake one, being arrogant and ignorant. The truth is that if you knew how to make a million dollars, you would be making a million dollars, or at the very least, you would be getting very close to that level. So that goes to show you, if currently you are not making as much money as you want to be making, you still have a long way to go and especially a lot to learn. In life, the people who think that they know everything, that they don't need to take advice from anyone else because, you know, they know everything, they're not open to receiving valuable feedback from people who are ahead of them, who have better results. They'll make countless mistakes and the worst part is that they won't even realize it. They're blind to feedback. And funny enough, usually the less you know about a specific subject, you think that you know everything. But then the more you learn about it, you realize, wow, there is so much to learn and in reality you can go so deep on a specific subject that you barely know anything at all. That is the Dunning-Kruger effect. Now the reason why you are not where you want to be in life. It's either two things actually. The first thing could be that you don't have the right knowledge because you could be doing something consistently. You could be trying to get customers and you're consistently doing it every day. You reach out to hundreds of people every day. But if you're not doing it properly, it doesn't matter how consistent you are. I mean, the best place you're going to see this is at the gym. If you're doing half reps, if you're doing exercises that don't really matter, you could be showing up every day, but the results are guaranteed to be disappointing. So that is why you need to know what to do. And then the other potential reason could be that you're simply not taking enough action. Like a lot of people just underestimate how much hard work, time and sacrifice it's actually going to take for them to reach their goals. So I really invite you to extend the timeline that you have in mind. If you think it's going to take a year to become a millionaire, make it three. If you think that to build the muscular physique of your dreams, it's going to be one or two years, extend that timeline to five or even 10 years. Now you have to understand that you will be forever ignorant if you always listen to the advice of people that don't have the results that you're looking for. If you're trying to lose weight, you should not take weight loss advice from an obese personal trainer. And in the same way, if you're trying to build a successful business for yourself, you should not listen to people who are going to try to discourage you from doing so because those people don't have a business. Truth is, your parents and your teachers, if you grew up low income or middle class, they have no clue about how money works. So you cannot take their financial advice and hope to end up in a better position. It's kind of like if you go to the gym, you take the advice of the skinny guy. Well, don't expect to become muscular. So bottom line, be open to learn. Understand that there is indeed a roadmap that leads to success. If you ask the muscular dude for some advice, you'll get so much further than if you try to do everything on your own, or worse, if you listened to the advice of somebody who is obese or somebody who is very skinny, because in either way, they don't have the results that you want. Mistake number two, not creating any value. Money is simply a tool that we exchange literally all over the world, in all places, in all countries, to exchange value. I mean, do you imagine having to go to the supermarket and having to trade for what you want? Like if you want to buy an apple, you've got to trade with like a pen or a book, how complicated would that be? And so if money comes from value, then it's no wonder that somebody who spends all day playing video games, all day watching Netflix, they're broke, they're not making any money. The reason being, they're not producing any value for anyone, they're just trying to entertain themselves. You've got to understand that in this world, you need to earn the right to make more. Freedom is not given it is earned. Understand this, producers make money while consumers spend money. Now don't get me wrong, because consuming is not a bad thing in itself. We all need to consume. We consume food, clothes, leisure activities, content, books to help us on our journey. So it's not like we can just be a producer. And let's be real, life is to be enjoyed as well. However, you do want to make sure that you are producing a lot more than you are consuming. And when you do consume, most of the time, don't be mindlessly consuming something which is not adding any benefits to your life. Because that's what most people do when they just lay in bed or sit on the couch and endlessly watch TikTok reels one after the other. But how is this helping them to become a better version of themselves? Mistake number three, lying to yourself. Truth is, in our society, everyone is afraid to speak their mind and to say what they really think. And it's not like it's something new. It's been the case for literally centuries. We always had social norms. It's not like you could just voice your opinions freely. That is, unless they went with the current, of course. But from what I've seen, if you say that you want to make a lot of money, people are going to look at you in a strange way. Like you just said something which is bad. Like you shouldn't want that. You should be ashamed. So no one is really bold enough to say that they want to make more money. It's this thing which has been demonized. It's like if you have a lot of money or if you have the desire to make a lot more money to become, let's say, a millionaire, it's like it makes you a bad person when that couldn't be further from the truth. Just look at any movie. The rich guys are often the evil guys, the bad guys. They had to do nasty things to get to where they are today. But the truth is, 
some rich people, yeah, they're evil, but some poor people are just as evil. It's not linked to how much money you make. It's not the more money you make, the more evil you'll be. It has nothing to do with how much you make. So if you're a bit shy about wanting to make more money, stop lying to yourself. I'm not saying that you have to announce your goals proudly to the world, because quite frankly, you shouldn't care. The opinion on others, on what you want out of life, you shouldn't even take that into consideration. And the reason I'm saying this is because at the end of your life, when you are on your deathbed, you're looking back at everything you did. You're viewing your life like it was a movie. How would you feel if you didn't chase your dreams just because some people disapproved? I'll tell you, you will feel as if you have missed out on life completely. And making a lot of money is not just about the sports cars, the luxurious lifestyle, the fancy vacations. In fact, it has to do with so much more than that. Having money to spend means being able to buy food, healthcare to provide for your family, to help people who are in need even. You can't give to charity, you can't solve world hunger if you are broke. It is literally not possible. So if you want to help others, first you need to help yourself. You need to make more money. Mistake number four, being lost. You know, it's great to say that you want to make more money, but that desire alone, it's not going to get you anywhere. Because I'll tell you one thing, life is indifferent to our suffering. Life is indifferent to our goals. A lot of people, when something bad happens to them, they feel like they're just unlucky. Like life has something against them. There is this faceless entity trying to prevent them from getting what they want. And it's the fault of that thing. It's holding them back. In reality, like I said, life is completely indifferent to our suffering. Things happen, not for a good reason or for a bad reason. Things just happen in nature. There's no good or bad. We human beings label things. We judge things. We say, oh, this is good, this is bad. But in nature, things are simply as they are. There is no moral judgment attached to it. And in fact, if you look in many cultures, what is considered right, it's going to be considered wrong in another culture. So that really goes to show you we decide what is good and what is bad. So this means that whenever something bad happens to you, you can decide to see the positive in it. And I know it's a lot easier said than done. But let's say you've had a terrible childhood. What can you do to change it? It's all in the past. You can decide to use that terrible childhood as fuel to work hard and to become as successful as you want to be. Or you can decide to let it crush you, to play the victim. You can make that childhood into the reason why you're not successful. At the end of the day, it's all up to you. But when it comes to being lost, most people say they want to be in shape, to make more money, to find love, to do this or to do that, but they don't have a plan. And even then, that is not a real goal, that's a simple wish. Making more money is not a goal, it's a wish, like I said. Saying something like, I want to have $10 million after tax in my bank account before I turn 30 years old, that is a concrete goal, because you've got an amount, so you can measure it, and also it has a specific time limit. Now, does it mean that necessarily you will achieve that goal before 30? No. But if you don't know what you're aiming for, how will you even get there in the first place? I've personally noticed that when I'm unproductive, I'm unmotivated, I can't focus on my work. It's always, at least most of the time, it is because of this one reason. It's because I've lost sight of my vision, of why I'm doing things. I sincerely believe that human beings can withstand tremendous amounts of pain, terrible things, as long as they still have a strong reason why. Think about the guy in a concentration camp. He has a daughter on the outside that he needs to protect. So that guy, he has the motivation to literally do whatever it takes to get through hell, because he has to protect his daughter which he loves. So that is an insanely powerful motivation. And that's why I often tell people, don't make it simply about you. Don't make it only about the materialistic gain. Because starting a business is tough. Very few people succeed. And if you want to be part of that minority of people who actually succeed, who actually get to live this type of dream life that everyone wants, you'll need to put in the work and to make the necessary sacrifices and to not quit. You need to refuse to take no for an answer. So if you make your goals not just about you, if you have a deeper reason behind why you work so hard every day, it could be retiring your parents, buying a home with the person that you love, providing for your family. This will drive you to work harder, especially when you least feel like it. Because let's face it, when you fall in love, you would go to such depths for that person, but you wouldn't even do half of that for yourself. That is crazy. So use that powerful motivation to your advantage. And at the end of the day, you need to realize that either you'll make your own dreams come true, or you will make the dreams of somebody else come true. The choice is yours. Now from your goals, you want to reverse engineer and ask yourself, what can I do today, right now? or this week to get closer to my goals. And that is how you'll start to form a plan of what to do. Because remember, a goal without a plan is not a goal. It is a wish. Mistake number five, wasting your money on fake pleasures. You see the problem with things like video games, movies, sugar, junk food, alcohol, partying, watching porn, or all things like that. These activities steal your time and your focus and your drive away from you. And unlike you might have heard if you are still young, no, you don't have time. Like so many people did not understand why I was so driven to achieve big things. They told me, you're young, you can just relax, you have your entire life ahead of you. My question to them is this, how the hell do you even 
know, not everyone is guaranteed to live up to 88 years old. For all you know, you could have only 5 years left to live. So tell me, how would you feel if you realized you only had 5 years left to live, and yet you've done nothing out of all of the things that you were dreaming of doing? To me, that is the worst possible fate. So act as if you were going to die tomorrow, but keep learning as if you were to live forever. And let's be real, when you just played 3 hours of video games, or you've eaten a big pizza which is worth 1,500 calories, do you really feel like going and doing some deep work after that? Mistake number 6. Unwillingness to sacrifice and to work hard. The truth is that people who work harder are 99% of the time more likely to be more successful than somebody who works less. Now don't get me wrong, there is such a thing as luck or having favorable circumstances. To give you an example, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon and one of the richest men on the planet, he got loaned $100,000 from his father to start Amazon. Can we say that he got lucky because he was born in the United States, which is probably one of the best countries to be born into in this world? To some degree, we can say that his success had to do something with luck, but the truth is that this applies to literally every single one of us. We all have our own unfair advantage. For somebody, like I said, this could be being born in the United States. For somebody else, it could be they have a naturally higher IQ. Someone could be an avid learner. It just comes naturally to them. Whatever it is, you two have your own unfair advantage. Now, truthfully, everybody wants to be rich. I have never met somebody who didn't want to be more successful and to make more money. However, very few are actually willing to do what it takes to put in the work day after day, month after month, and year after year. If you just went out in the street, you gave people a thousand dollars, most of them would take it gladly. If you asked most people, would you like to make an extra two thousand dollars a month? Most people would agree, of course, why not? But how many are actually willing to work for it? That is a big difference. So bottom line, if you think that you can escape working hard and making sacrifices on your way to success, unless you believe in your ability to get extremely lucky, this plan is honestly going to fail. Mistake 7. Quitting too soon. That is the number one reason why people don't get what they want in life, why they never achieve anything substantial. Believe it or not, but it's not a lack of intelligence or a lack of skills or of talent. You need to understand that pain equals growth. There is usually no growth without its fair amount of pain. To give you an example, when you go to the gym, it's hard, you're pushing yourself, especially if you're lifting heavy weights. But most people don't get the results that they want because they're not pushing hard enough. So imagine when you're in the gym, you do some bicep curls, let's say, and you start to feel uncomfortable because, I mean, at some point, after you've done like 10 reps, ah, it's not that easy anymore. So then, should you just quit if you can do more? Truth is, successful people have a higher pain tolerance than most people, but they weren't born with that trait. They have trained themselves to endure more pain. I had a cousin of mine one day who told me, I don't know how you have the motivation to go into exercise every single day because I don't have it. But the funny thing is, I'm not motivated to exercise every day, but on the outside, it might look like I am. But that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm human, I'm just like everyone else. Some days I feel just lazy, I don't want to go into work hard. Yet, every single day, I'm up before the sun is out and I go to the gym because it matters to me, because I want the outcome more than I want to listen to my feelings and to feel comfortable in the present moment. And let's be honest, when you push your limits, when you challenge yourself, how good do you feel when you've done it? Proud of yourself and you feel like you've done something productive and worthwhile. And that is one of the best feelings in the world. Mistake 8. Being impatient. Now I'll tell you this, I am probably the most impatient person in the entire world. And if you ask me, frankly, I'll tell you, patience is not always a virtue. Because plenty of people use patience as an excuse as to why they're not pushing hard, as to why they're not doing more. But let's be real, you still need to be patient even if you work hard. Because you could work 16 hours today. But then, are you going to wake up tomorrow and be a multi-millionaire? Obviously not. You have to understand that consistency matters a lot more than intensity. Because like I said, you could work 16 hours in one day. It's technically physically possible, I guess. But who is going to make more progress? Somebody who works 16 hours a day once a month? Or somebody who works 4 hours a day for an entire year? Now you've got to understand that when it comes to time, the shorter the time frame, the harder the intensity. And what this means is that if you want to get results faster, you want to go from point A to point B faster, then you're going to need to provide more force. It's kind of like if you want to run a 5k. If you want to get to your destination faster, well, what can you do? You just need to run faster. There is no other way around it. But if I'm being completely honest with you, the truth is that you will never control 100% of the variables. It is simply not possible. You don't fully control the outcome. You only control the actions that you do, the effort that you put in. You could craft a beautiful outreach message 
hedge for a prospect, but does it guarantee 100% that you'll get the sale? No. So you need to do your part, but life also has to do its part. You need to understand that timing plays a key role in anyone's rise to success. So I love that quote that says that luck is simply when preparation meets opportunity. But the reason why most people don't get quote unquote lucky or indeed successful is because they quit before they reach that point, before they actually get lucky. So if you avoid those eight mistakes, your chances of getting to $10,000 a month are only going to shoot through the roof. Now, if you want to start your own online business, but you don't know how to do it, I have recorded a free video in which I'm going to analyze every popular online business model. Together, we'll take a look at the pros and at the cons, and I'm also going to share with you for completely free the three-step process that you can use to start your business literally today and to get your first customers as quickly as possible. If you're interested, the link is in the description below.